This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And what a week this has been. A week that's been surrounded by the previous 10 weeks with the consequences of this dreaded virus. And now to be added on top of this great painful event is the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis, a tragedy, an abuse of power. And in the face of, of this day, we are now facing two crises, and they seem to have no end. Jesus was right when he said in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. It's a very practical truth. You can go through this life with one vision, and that vision is just what you see, what life offers, what is given to us, what we experience. And what will that be? It will be trouble followed by trouble followed by trouble. In the end, all of this trouble and difficulty overwhelms us. And right now we're dealing with double trouble that seems to have no end in sight. But Jesus said, take heart, I have overcome the world. Meaning that there is another way of going through life. Same trouble, same difficulties, same unexpected crises. And yet, Christ says, I have another way for you to experience life. It's trust and believing what in Hebrews 11, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. It's eyes to be able to see what can't be seen, faith. And what is that faith? It's the sight to see and to believe and to base our life on the fact that there is a God who has worked out all of the circumstances, all of the experiences of your life and mine to bring us to this moment of double trouble. And at the same time, Christ says, there's a way to overcome it and to know that your life is in the hand of a loving, caring God who knows you and me better than we know ourselves. And so Job, in Job 14, 1, is correct. Life is short and full of trouble. Meaning what? Job experienced the loss of his business, death of close friends, family. And when his wife comes and says, why don't you just curse God? He says, shall I curse God who's been so good to me in the days of plenty? I accepted it. And now in a day of trouble? No. I believe that my Redeemer lives and I will see him one day face to face. Job was able to endure the tragedy of illness and boils and loss in this life because he believed that God had made him for eternity and his trust in God's creation and the circumstances of his life. This is an ongoing dilemma. Christians, believers, 
ever since Adam have struggled with trouble and evil in life, with pandemics and tragic murders in Minneapolis and the looting across the country. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, we read an interesting verse that God gave some apostles, some came as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of service, to build them up in the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure and stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Now, this is a very concentrated verse. He is talking about the entire scripture from Genesis to Revelation. He's saying that there have been stages of information about this faith, and it has been delivered in unique ways. So sometimes we are very confused as Christians when we say, uh, but prophets spoke to God. Adam walked in the garden and spoke with God. Moses saw a cloud. The people were led by a pillar of fire. And we ask ourselves, uh, why doesn't God do that anymore? Why is it so unclear? And when I start to hear people say, that I had a vision or God told me something that I question it. But I don't think I would have questioned an Old Testament prophet. They were always right. See, this is an important point of theology, of revelation, that God has used different delivery systems to communicate one thing, to live by faith, trusting in this living God. And so there was a time when Adam spoke face to face with God, but then the fall and that ended. No one talks face to face anymore with God. But the message was always the same, to live by faith. The message never changed. The delivery system changed. The delivery system changed to judges and kings and prophets prophets who received a word from God and could tell you what God told them and it changed history. Well, where are the prophets today? Where are those who 100% of the time can tell us accurately? Well, it was for a period of time and the purpose of those prophets was the same message, but a different delivery system. In this verse from Ephesians, we're told, in the past, yes, God spoke through prophets, apostles. Apostles actually saw Jesus risen from the dead. You and I have not seen Jesus physically risen from the dead. And we say, oh, if I had just been there, I would believe. And then you realize, but that's not 
the delivery system for today. And then Ephesians tells us he brought some pastors, some evangelists, all culminating all of these different delivery systems, always clarifying what does it mean to live by faith until finally we come to Jesus Christ who dies on a cross. Jesus Christ who's risen from the dead. Jesus Christ who has created the church. The church is now the delivery system. It's the same message, but a new delivery system. This is what Jesus struggled with when he came and lived for 33 years on earth. During that time, the old delivery system of the scribes and the Pharisees, it's through the law, it's through all of these regulations. Jesus comes and says, no, it has never been through that. It has always been through the Spirit of God, through faith. They take Christ. They execute him because they did not want this new delivery system. Just this week, Apple postponed uh, another new device uh, and said, uh, we're postponing it because of all these circumstances of the virus and George Floyd and all of the looting and circumstances that we're living in. What they're saying is, we're not ready to give you a new delivery system. Jesus faced that question and they killed him on a cross. Why? Because he said, here's the clearest delivery system. This is what all of that living by faith in the past was pointing to, was pointing to me, to my life, death, and resurrection. I am the new delivery system of faith. In Christ, they thought they ended it. They postponed it for three days. And then the new delivery system came, the church. Jesus was quite aware of this complication and how reluctant we are to accept a new delivery system, especially the church. In the book, of Mark chapter 2. He talks about healing on the Sabbath. It offends all of the religious leaders. Why? Because they said you can't do that. That's violating the law. And now in Mark 2, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. They came and said to Jesus, why did John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, while the bridegroom is with them, the attendants of the bridegroom cannot fast, can they? So long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the day will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them. Then they will fast in that day. No one, said Jesus, sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the patch pulls away the new from the old. 
and a worse tear results. No one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost and the skins as well. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. What's all this talk about wineskins? He's saying there's always been the same wine. But I have given it in different delivery systems. And now I'm giving it to you as a person, Jesus Christ, to put your faith in me. And then he created the church as the new delivery system. Now, it would be very nice if the church just remained static. It was always very clear, the delivery system of the church. But it took quite a while before the church put all of the writings together in, in a, a book in the Bible. It took quite a while as people who were illiterate. And they had the words, they were written in Latin. Peasants didn't understand, uneducated people didn't understand. So what was the delivery system initially in the church? Well, in places like uh, Scotland and Ireland, all through Europe, they, they built little churches. What were they made of? Stone, four walls, about 15 feet high. Why about 15 feet? Because you can't pile stones much higher than that before it crashes in. And so you look at all the old churches in some field in Ireland, and you can tell that was the delivery system of the church. But then they discovered a buttress that could hold up the sides. And so they could build the churches as tall and as high as they wanted. And suddenly in Europe, you see churches like in Cologne, in England, with these massive supports, high roofs. For the first time, windows, light is entering. They were so excited about light that they put as many windows as they could and they said, this is the light of Christ coming into the church, and we go out with that light. But then they realized that the people couldn't read, so they developed stained glass. And the early stained glass was beautiful depictions of a Bible story. And people could look up, like we would look at a, a brand new delivery system of movies. And we would say, did you ever see anything like it? It's so majestic. Well, they would walk into a church and they would see the picture of Jesus being born in Bethlehem. And they saw it. And the new delivery system worked. And the church grew. And then the church continues to go through stages. It is always brought about because of a crisis or a new discovery. Right now, the church, our church, Princeton Meadow, all the churches around the world, the mosques, the synagogues, are all facing the same thing. It's been weeks, months. People haven't even gone into the building, hardly left their house. It takes 30 days to develop a new habit. And what's the new habit that Americans have discovered? I don't have to go to church. They've found other delivery systems 
for content, I can go to the internet. I didn't even know it was there. I didn't realize there was such a, a rich reservoir of biblical messages. And what about singing? Well, now we're told the complications of gathering groups of people. And so it's been weeks since any of us have sung together, been with our friends, prayed together, worshiped together. Over the past at least four weeks, I've been working along with the church staff on a new delivery system here in the church. Recognizing so many new restrictions placed by the state in preparation for next Sunday, June 14th, we will conduct worship service in our building. And I hope you will tell your friends and neighbors to come and join us. Just yesterday, I called all of the churches, the mosque, the synagogue, Catholic Church, Protestants, met with all of those leaders, and we discussed the opening of our congregations together. There were two medical doctors who work directly seven days a week with this virus. The chief of police of West Windsor was part of this call because I wanted to make sure that we would be providing a safe, legal, best practices that we understand to date for the opening of churches. And so when you come on Sunday, the 14th, we will have two services, one at nine o'clock, one at 10 o'clock. They will be 45 minutes long. You're asked to bring a mask, have your children in a mask, Bring your own Bible and whatever materials you might need for your children to stay busy. There will be one entrance from the parking lot. It will be clearly marked with a sign, enter. You'll be greeted at a six foot distance by our greeters. You will find a trail leading to the sanctuary, which you're all familiar with. The rest of the building will not be used. There will be one set of restrooms closest to the sanctuary. We ask that just one person or family use it at a time. There will be a sign on the door in use Bacon. Be sure to flip it when you're done. For changing tables, they will be wipes for you to make sure that they're sanitized. We have hired for the entire building a disinfecting process. Between the services, everything will be again disinfected so you'll be safe. You will enter the sanctuary. There will be no bulletin. There will be no Sunday schools. We will be worship only. This is a new delivery system for the church. We have no idea how long this will last. We'll be able to use every other row. Families will be considered one unit. And when you're seated, six feet apart, 
The next unit could be one person, two people, if you're a couple, or a family. With those restrictions, seating is limited, but it's based on the occupancy of the entire church building. I asked the chief of police how this is all going to be monitored. He said, oh, we are not monitoring that with police. It's self-monitored. Some churches are having services on a back open lot. Some are trying to do something in their cars. Some inside. All of those numbers can be uh, added up. So it's a very complex. We are just worshiping in the sanctuary. You'll find when you come in a small container that will be on a table for you to take. It's a, a self-contained communion cup with a little simple lid that has a piece of bread, which we will take together uh, at the end of the sermon and then lift again and the cup. And if you would hold on to that and deposit it at the end of the service. There'll be no greeting session in the service. There will be no collecting during the service or passing of an offering plate. Instead, you will find in the aisle an offering box. And I want to remind you that giving, because of the virus, has been down, last count, 22%. So we value your contributions and your tithe. There will be screens that we will use. The only live person on the platform will be myself. There will be no bulletin. Everyone will be able to see from the screens. Uh, music, keep your mask on, you'll be able to sing with that mask. Uh, and exiting through one side door, which will be clearly marked. The service will end at the nine o'clock service at quarter of 10, promptly, giving us 15 minutes for you to exit the building and the next group to be able to enter by 10 o'clock. And we appreciate your help. In the meantime, we're looking very seriously at how and the best practices uh, for small group gatherings using items like Zoom, which we've all become quite handy with. You see, this is a new delivery system. It's the same message of faith. Faith in God through Jesus Christ, his son, his life, his death, his resurrection, his eventual return.